Hello, hello everybody. I am Insomniac and today we're going to take a look at the new patch that came out on March 6th. I have the entire patch open on my second screen here, so um, we're gonna jump right into this. So first off, we're gonna start with Kensei because he's one of the characters that I have made a tutorial for, so it only fits if I address these characters first. So Kensei had some changes done to him. So for example, the side light attacks are now a little bit faster from 700 milliseconds to 600 milliseconds, which is a good change, but um, yeah, the change doesn't really do anything for you. As the developers say right here, the intention for it was they wanted to give Kensei some other moves to open your opponent up, and the Helm Splitter was the fastest move up until then, and it looks like that one has been slowed down. So yeah, they made his side light attacks faster, so that you could open people up, but 600 milliseconds is... It's still extremely slow. But the bigger change that was done to the sidelights instead of the speed increase was that instead of the second chain hit that you can initiate after this light, you can chain directly into the chain finisher moves. So you could go directly into the unblockable off that. Now the reason why this is big is because you used to be able to go into the second hit. And usually you would go from the sidelight into the second one, but now you go into the third hit. So you can go sidelight into uninterruptible, or you could go sidelight into unblockable, and obviously all the mix-ups you get off that. All of that you can now do after a sidelight, or even after the helm splitter. Like Kensei is all about getting his unblockable mix up. So they made it possible for you to chain into the unblockable a lot earlier so that you could get that mix up a lot sooner. One thing that you have to note as well is side lights used to be unsafe on block, but they are not anymore. But yeah, that's all for Kensei. Let's move on to some other characters. So let's talk about some of the changes that I don't have to demonstrate. Peacekeeper right here. Um, she got nerfed a little bit, but uh, her nerf was more than over do and those are the changes. So if you play this game you know that peacekeeper mains were extremely annoying to fight against because all they would do is spam light attacks which are extremely fast or they would flicker into their unreactably fast zone attack. Her zone attack is still just as fast but the indicator comes up earlier so that makes it quote-unquote easier to react to it. But the bigger change for her zone attack is that her zone attack's property was changed. As you know, all zone attacks are heavy attacks in that you don't bounce back if your opponent blocks them, if they can even block it. But with Peacekeeper, the first hit is now a light attack, so she gets interrupted when you block her zone attack, which is a good change because that means that you can't just do the sun attack over and over again, but the problem is that even if you block it and you try to guard break Peacekeeper, she can tech that guard break, which I don't agree with. If you already are able to block the zone attack, I think that you should get a guaranteed punish off that, but that's just me. Her sight dash heavies got changed as they deal less damage, but the bleed that you get afterwards is increased which is a absolutely stupid change in my opinion, because this only helps out bad players, this doesn't balance her at high level, so that's completely useless. Who else do we have? Well, we have Warlord, which got changed pretty heavily as well, and he got the right changes in my opinion. His headbutt costs more stamina from 12 to 15. Now, that doesn't sound like a big change, but that is a 20% increase, so that, that's quite the nerf. Um, and, I've, as you can see, I've played Warlord a little bit, but I don't know too much about him, except for the fact that he was extremely cancerous to play against. He is very stamina intensive, or at least the way I like to play him, so making one of his best moves cost more stamina is a welcome change. As well as, the dodge window for the headbutt has been increased by 200 milliseconds. Now, that does doesn't sound like a lot, but 200 milliseconds is pretty much the reaction time of most people. So giving you, in that sense, another unit of reaction time on top of what it already was is welcome. I have to be honest with you, it's still not like you're gonna dodge it every single time if you're not expecting it, but if you're ready for it, you can dodge it most of the time. So the miss recovery I was reduced from 800 to 700 milliseconds as in the with recovery, which 700 milliseconds is already enough for a guaranteed punish, you just have to be fast, but the recovery time that they've increased is the time that Warlord has 
before he can cancel into an attack. So that's 200 milliseconds more, which is good. There were also some bug fixes done to his full block stance, which was good. We also have Berserker, and this is actually one that I'm gonna show off. So the thing with Berserker was that his unstoppable chain right here, previously you only got the super armor of Berserker after the fourth hit. Now you get it after the second one, as you can see, which is really good because that makes it a lot more viable for Berserker to go for this chain. Now, Conqueror was addressed as well as Conqueror was nerfed and fixed in the sense that he used to be able to, for example, block Warden's guaranteed lights after the shoulder bash, which no one else could do. So that was a bug that he could do. He can no longer do that. Damage of his heavy attacks got increased from 23 to 25. Now this is an extremely small change. Numbers-wise, this is an extremely small change. But it used to be that Conqueror couldn't finish a enemy if he had guard broken them, as in, if they had 25 health, which is the maximum that you regenerate if you go below 25 once, then Conqueror couldn't finish that opponent, leaving them with 1 or 2 HP all the time, and he couldn't close out fights. That's why they raised that from 23 to 25, because now he can actually kill you after a guard break if you once were on critical health and regenerated. And something very important that I want to say is that the recovery timing after Shoulder Bash has been increased for Conqueror, which is a numbers-wise small nerf, but at least now it allows you to punish him after the shoulder bash if you're fast enough, as far as I know. Also, it takes some longer to chain into his shoulder bash, which should make it easier to avoid it, because Conqueror online used to be shoulder bash into dot shoulder bash, into dot shoulder bash all the time, or the shield bash guaranteed light attacks, which just made it so that Conqueror could turtle the entire game long and would just kill you with lights. And the fights were extremely boring, it was extremely hard to kill the guy. It was overall just cheesy, so I'm glad that that's gone now, or at least to some extent. But the guy that saw the most love was Lawbringer, by far. So, this is not a guide for Lawbringer, but Lawbringer got changed so drastically that I have to show this off. The long arm, which is the pancake flip move, now guarantees a side heavy instead of a side light attack, which increases his damage output. Then a lot of the timings for his chains got decreased, like certain light and heavy attacks got buffed in damage. And for example, the in the Judge Turian Executioner chain, the last heavy which initiates the unblockable was buffed from 30 to 45 damage, so he had a lot of changes done. But the biggest buffs, in my opinion, were done to shove and all of his parry moves. Lobringer is all about defending himself using shove, shove, alternate, and his parry moves to get most of his damage. Now, pre-patch, the only parry moves that you would get after every parry would be for the light rip pose, I think. That was the only thing that was guaranteed after parry, after a heavy parry. But now, everything else you would only get after a light parry, which you would most likely go for the unblockable as that yielded the most damage. But now it has been changed so that Lobringer gets all of his parry moves on every parry, except for the blind justice with which is the top finisher. So let's start with Lawbringer's parry moves. So the first one, the light rip pose, is guaranteed after every parry, but it now this is your opponent. So now, if you parry your opponent, even the heavy rip pose like this is guaranteed, which it didn't use to be before. You previously only used to get this after a light attack, which you can now get off a heavy as well, which is extremely beneficial as that allows Lawbringer to deal more damage overall as I can push opponents into the wall. The timing for it is strict, but you can still get this. The parry zone attack was changed as well in that it has super armor, is guaranteed. The armor of a parry doesn't make a lot of sense in 1v1s, 
but in 2v2s and 4v4s this makes a lot more sense. The heavy top finisher after a parry has not been changed. So yeah, Lawbringer got a lot of changes, a lot of uh, timing decreases, a lot of damage increases and all the changes that I have demonstrated as well. So Lawbringer is Lawbringer is a lot better than he used to be and I do appreciate these changes but you have to know he now has an extremely frustrating bug because the light attack after a shove has been increased in speed which means that the move comes out faster if Lawbringer blocks an attack and then shoves right afterwards and chains that into a light attack. Most characters can't block the attack if it hits the guard stance that they had before he shoved. So in order to block that move then, the attacker of Lawbringer had to flicker around with their guard stance and then match Lawbringer's attack stands after the shove light in order to block it which is extremely confusing and that is a bug and it is not intended so I hope that goes eventually but for now you have to be wary of that so if you face a lawbringer who knows about this bug which most of them should because well they're playing lawbringer they're not gonna attack you once and just wait for you to attack them and they don't even parry, they just block and then shove you into the light that you're most likely not going to be able to block. So that's extremely cheesy, and I hope that bug gets fixed soon. The other characters that were changed, besides the ones that I've already talked about, were Valkyrie, Nobushi, and Shigoki. So let's talk about them. Shugoki, as I've said in my tutorial, has um, enhanced light attacks, which means you don't bounce off of your opponent even if they block your light attack. But obviously he could still be interrupted on superior block, like Warlord's full block stance, like Conqueror's regular blocks and Warlord's light attacks and so on and so forth. But the recovery time was 900 milliseconds, which was long enough for, for example, Conqueror to get a guaranteed guard break, out of which the Shigoki player couldn't escape, and that was changed down to 800 milliseconds, which seems to be the sweet spot, as 800 milliseconds allows you to break that guard break. That was already the change for Shigoki. It's not a big change, but it is a very big quality of life type of change as as conqueror was for example not supposed to get a guard break after blocking your light attack and which literally made it impossible for shugoki to attack conqueror because he would get a guard break after any attack that he did and now that has changed so i'm happy with that then nobushi was the next character to be changed so her recovery times got changed in the sense that two of them were changed from 900 and 1000 milliseconds down to 800 milliseconds which makes it so that you wouldn't get guard broken as Nobushi if you if your opponent blocked certain light attacks which is good and another light attack previously was 700 milliseconds on recovery and now that is 800 as well so she should feel a lot more consistent now and then we have Valkyrie which pretty much had the same changes done to her as the changes that were done to Nobushi. So again, certain moves used to be so uh, long on recovery on block that they were unsafe. But this is mostly true for chain finishers, not for her jump in light attack as that still is unsafe on block. And I think that is how it should be. So yeah, those were all the move pattern changes for all of the characters and again to summarize real quick Kensei got some big changes Lawbringer got the biggest changes of all of them Peacekeeper was nerfed but not enough in my opinion but obviously by buffing other characters such as Lawbringer who basically stood no chance versus Peacekeeper her matchups change as well so that that's good Warden was not changed Raider was not changed and Orochi also wasn't changed but the developers said that they are gonna take a look in into those characters in the next patch which is good because Raider still is extremely underpowered as is and Raider is still considered to be very underpowered by most of the community and I would agree in that but uh, it's that the other characters get a patch soon so yeah Conqueror was nerfed and he definitely deserved that nerf because he was too hard to defeat as the developers have said on their stream
stream, but those were not all the changes that were done. There were also a lot of UI fixes, there were a lot of bug fixes, there were game mode changes and all of that stuff. So if you want me to go over these changes, I can make a separate video on them, but I don't think that this is all too interesting to listen to. Maybe I'll talk about the bigger changes. So elimination was changed in the sense that there used to be buffs right at the beginning of every round, so it sometimes would make more sense to run away and get a buff and then come back in the fight, which was annoying. Now that is not the case anymore, the buffs will spawn after 20 seconds. And changes like that were made to a, to a few other things. But some of the other fixes that were made is that if you were playing on a laptop, it sometimes wouldn't allow you to go into full screen mode. That is supposed to be changed now. I haven't tested this out. The game now also supports 21 to 9 resolutions, so that's really cool. But yeah, there were a lot more things like that. Also, the game freezing after certain things. That was also fixed. And some of the gear stats have also been nerfed and readdressed, which I see as a welcome change. For example, revenge attack and regular attack stats used to stack pre-patch, and they no longer do now, which if, if you play Dominion against people with full gear stats, you know that, for example, Shugoki could get 180 attack um, hits in, which would kill even someone like Lawbringer who has 180 health. That, that was definitely ridiculous, but now that has changed. And also the values for most, and also the values for most of these have been reduced. For example, revenge attack used to go up to 50%, now it's 24%, and it, all of those small changes. So if you want to look at all of the changes, I'll leave a link to the patch notes down in the description of the video, but um, other than that, that has pretty much been it. So I'm gonna continue make tutorials for this game, and I have now finished all of the samurai characters. So let me know in the comments down below what character you want to see next, because since I'm done with the samurai characters, which are the characters that I care most about, I really don't care now who I'm gonna take a look into. As you can see, I've played Warden a little bit, and I can explain him without even having to play him because he's so easy. Then I am level 6 and Warlord right here because I wanted to try him out, especially after the patch because I was most interested in his nerfs. I can take a look at Peacekeeper, Raider, Valkyrie, Lawbringer, anyone you want to see. And I think I'm gonna do Lawbringer next just because he got the most changes. So I think next tutorial will be Lawbringer after I have played with him a little bit. But yeah, other than that, thanks for listening. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you want to see similar content to this video right here. And again, thanks again so much for watching. Hope I'll see you next time. Take care.